Hi, welcome to Analytics for All. Today's lesson, we're going to be continuing on with web scraping with Python. We're going to be using Request and Beautiful Soup. Uh, I did an earlier video on Request web scraping where I kind of covered a little bit what HTML is. Uh, if you're not sure I'll have a, about this, you want to go back and check that video out, I'll put a link down in the description. I'll also have a link in the description to my website where I have write-ups on this. So very quickly again, request module, this is the one we're using. It allows you to call a website so you can inspect its HTML code. We're just going to be using a couple codes from it, get in the website address, and then we're going to print the results as text. And the next one we're using is beautiful soup. This is an HTML parser. It's one of its functions. It allows us to easily pull out the important information from HTML. Uh, main content. T syntax we're using today is beautiful soup, the HTML, and then HTML parser, and we can look at it. Uh, it's kind of easier to explain on the go in the code, so let's go ahead and open up our notebook. All right, I got my notebook open here. We're going to start with import request is RE. Again, this as RE, anytime you see this as something, that's just your aliasing, so you don't have to keep typing request the entire time. And then from BS4, import beautiful soup, run it. If you run this, you get no errors, you're good. You have these both installed. And if you have the Anaconda distribution, you should. If not, you might have to go to pip or conda and install these two. All right, so let's go ahead and start. We're going to go to my website, analyticsforall.org. Right up here. And we are going to look at it, and we're going to pull the HTML and print it out as text. So go there. And here we have, we have my HTML printed out. So this is all the code behind my website. This is everything that makes it. You can see, got a title here. Uh, you can see lots of links if you start going below. But this is all the stuff that makes up my site. And something like this, honestly, I use just this R alone in a lot of work where I will just search this code looking for keywords. I look for things like password username to see if there's a website that's trying to collect passwords and usernames. Uh, I look for things that might have my company name is this website that might be trying to mimic my company. And I can do this all just with this r.txt. Uh, so that's very functional. This, I mean, these, this first two rows are kind of really all you need to get started in web scraping. But beautiful soup makes this a lot easier. So we're going to scroll down here and we're going to pass the R dot content because the R is what we pass my website to. So dot content is the HTML actual file. We're going to pass this through beautiful soup and apply the HTML parser as what we want it to do. And we're going to print soup prettify. Okay. Now it may look kind of the same. I assure you if you try this in a regular IDE like spider, the top is going to come out just one single blob of text. But down here, it's actually a better looking. It's easier to read. As you can see, we go up here, we look at my title. Up here, you have title, analytics for all. This is like a command for the size and the color of my text. Down here in the beautiful soup, it's much cleaner. You can see the title, my title. There's no weird codes in the middle. All right. And again, title. We know we want the title. Instead of having to just blindly search using like a regular expression or a search feature, I can just go down here and I could print soup.title. There it is. Now, if I don't want the markups around it, I can print soup.title.string. And there you go. And I've got that and I could save that and search through it. Okay. Another cool functionality is soup.get.text. So here's all the text. Let me scroll down for you for my website. Here it is, dedicated to unraveling. The mystery behind big data analytics, you know, and here we can go and scroll down on my website, and there it is, analytics for all is dedicated to unraveling the mystery behind data, data analytics. And this is great, I can pull just what I want. Okay, now you might be thinking, okay, that's cool, what's, you know, can you use this for? I use this to pull things at work all the time, like. I can go through my website that where tickets are stored, and I can just pull them as a string and store them, and I can automatically email out stuff from that way to all my team. So it's a function. It's really good. It's useful for that. So, But we can sit there, and you can see the pieces. Another cool thing let's look at, let's going to look at links. We're going to soup find all A, 
get the link from href. Href and A, these are HTML codes telling you this is a linking to somewhere. And as you can go down here and look now, you can see all the different websites and pages my website links to. Probability, statistics, machine learning, which if you're not sure what I mean by a link, when you go to the website and you come up top and you see this one machine learning and you click on it, this is guiding you to another page. It's guiding you to this page, machine learning, so where you can look at all these others. And these are all also links to somewhere else. You know. So that's where all this comes from. And that's where this link comes from. And that's a really cool feature of it. You know, again, Beautiful Soup has more features than this just, but this is the main kind of functionality I use it for, and it's a really good introduction for this. Okay, so I don't know about the rest of you, but you know. Every time it was always a pet peeve in school, I'd learn something new, but no one could ever tell me, you know, applications or uses for it. Well, I work for Verizon in the cybersecurity field. So one of the things I'm concerned about is people making, going out and creating web pages like this. Verizon Wireless with, a, with an L. What happens is this little address gets sent by a text message to people. And it says, hey, your account's been compromised. Da, 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 da. So uh, click on this link, and you'll click on the link, and it'll look just like a Verizon page. And it'll have a, a you know, user email, username, password, and you'll type it in. You're not going to Verizon. You're just sending, you just sent your password to somebody. So if you ever get these links, don't ever click on them. When in doubt, call tech support, and they'll know if they sent you something or not. Uh, so what happens is I get a listing daily of every new registered domain that might look like one of ours and I run it through just this r request.get and I look for words in there. I look for words like username, password, Verizon, I look for our colors, anything that might look like something that somebody's trying to imitate our website with. And if I see it, I flag it and it tells us to go ahead and look at this one, you know. Other ones I look through, I see they're still landing pages, that kind of stuff. But anything like that, we look at, we want to make sure we can get these websites down before they can compromise pay, you know, any of our customers. That's a valid use. Except another use is I have a website where I get tickets. You know, I run a data science team. People are always sending us requests, you know, for new models to, you know, to look, do some statistics for them, to check out some data, to get some, move some data around for them. Uh, instead of having to go in there every day and, look at each one of the tickets down I can just download the text off this using beautiful soup and look through all the different ticket names because I know what reference they're under and I can look at tickets and I know based on the ticket I get and based on the description I can automatically email it to the appropriate team member to work on it so these are two great time-saving functions I've managed to do just by using these two simple libraries of beautiful soup and requests in the next upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how to interact with a web page using Selenium. This will allow you to increase your web, you know, increase your web scraping ability because now you're going to be able to go into pages that maybe you have to type in a password to get to, or maybe you got to jump a few pages to get to it. So we're going to use Selenium to do very similar things, but we're going to use it to interact with a web page first. Okay. Okay, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, you can visit my website, analyticsforall.org. I have write-ups on most of this stuff on there. Uh, hit the subscribe button, like, leave a comment, tell me what you'd like me to work on going forward. Uh, again, I'll put all the links to the any videos that link this series together down in the description. Thank you very much.